Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the preview for the 2024 Japanese Grand Prix. No, don't worry, you haven't overslept by six months or whatever. It is still April and it really is Japan Race Week already. I absolutely love this track and this is one of my favourite weekends of the season. So as weird as it feels having it this early, it is actually really nice having it this early in the season. I can't wait for it. But anyway, last time out, F1 was in Melbourne where Carlos Sainz ended Max Verstappen's run of race wins. The Dutchman, as I'm sure you remember, retiring after his rear brake caught fire, having been stuck on since the start of the race. Oh, the drama. But now it is on to Japan for the fourth round of this season. The wonderful, in my view anyway, 5.807 kilometer, that's 3.6 miles Suzuka circuit, hasn't undergone any major changes since F1 visited back in September, so it's still made up of 18 corners. I think it's fair to say the track is fast and flowing for the most part, but there are some slow speed turns like Turn 9, also known as Degna 2, the hairpin at Turn 11, which is a great spot to try and overtake if you're Kamui Kobayashi, and the famous final chicane, of course. Now, those slower corners will come in handy because there is just the one DRS zone in use this weekend, and that is probably, as you'd expect, running down the start-finish straight. So whilst it is possible to take advantage of that and make moves down the straight and into the first couple of corners, drivers may have to get creative, which will be nice to see, and make some old-school overtakes at other spots around the lap. And in 2023, perhaps predictably, Max Verstappen took the win to help Red Bull wrap up the Constructors' title with the McLaren duo of Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri following the Dutchman home on Sunday. Although Norris was just shy of 20 seconds off the lead come the end of the race, it was a comfortable one for Max Verstappen. That was, by the way, Piastri's first ever F1 podium and Norris's fourth podium of 2023 and his second of four podiums on the bounce. Four, of course, also being his race number and Japan is race number four of the 2024 season. That is a lot of fours, which is excellent news because four is also the number of tyres on an F1 car. At least that's how many they start with. Oh, yes, it is tyre talk time once again. You know you love it, really. The compounds available for this one then are the hardest in the Pirelli Ranger, so they are the hard C1, the medium C2, and the soft C3. Don't forget, they will also have intermediates and wet tyres available should they need them at any stage during the weekend, which is a possibility. More on that later, though. The track surface at Suzuka is rough and abrasive, and so is a test for tyres when it comes to wear as well as forces and lows throughout the lap, thanks in part to the long consecutive fast-flowing corners, all of which is why, once again, Pirelli has gone with the hardest compounds available. Something else for the teams to consider this weekend is that because the race is being held earlier in the year, temperatures will be lower than is usually expected when the race rolls around. More on that in a moment as well, but it is going to be a big factor. When it comes to strategy, two stops tends to be the favoured option, as was the case last year, where race winner Max Verstappen ran the mediums for the first two stints of the race, changing to a fresh set on lap 16 before pitting again on lap 37 to put on the set of the hards, which took it to the end of the race. The two McLarens, by the way, went medium hard and then hard again, but whatever the combination, two stops was largely the strategy throughout the field. However, those lower temperatures I've already mentioned might open the door for a one-stop race if drivers are kind to their tyres, but it's worth noting the cooler temperatures will make it tricky to keep the compounds in their optimum operating window, so keep an eye out for the impact that has, especially on outlaps following stops as drivers try to get their tyres up to temperatures. Just a final few things to mention on strategy. The total pit lane lost time last year was mainly between 23 and 25 seconds. Sergio Perez, though, spending the most time in the pits with a total loss of 41 minutes and 25 seconds as the team repaired his car and sent him back out again to serve a penalty for hitting Kevin Magnussen before retiring the car, you could say again. So a long stop, but not quite as long as Valtteri Bottas in Monaco a couple of years ago. The full safety car has appeared at three of the last five races in Japan, so that will likely influence strategy if we see one during the race. And at time of recording, the weather forecast for Suzuka is a bit mixed with rain a threat, although that threat does fall away as the weekend goes on with a 20% chance of a shower during qualifying and highs of 18 degrees. And on Sunday, temperatures are currently forecast to be as high as 19 degrees with around about a 10% chance of rain falling once the race is underway. As always, though, that could all change come the weekend and the weather at Suzuka can be unpredictable at times. As for this weekend's schedule, it is another early one over here, although not quite 4am. That's not a complaint, by the way. As I've said, what feels like a million times on this channel. I actually prefer the early races, honestly. There's just something about getting up early to watch F1. I love it. Not that anybody asked. But anyway, FP1 will get the weekend underway from 3.30am BST. And FP2 will start at 7am later that same morning. Saturday's action starts with FP3 and that is from 3.30am with qualifying underway at 7am and it will be lights out for the race on Sunday at 6am and once again that is in UK time. Now, before I get on to my predictions, I'm just going to have a quick run through a few news stories and talking points happening in the rounds ahead of the weekend in Japan. 
So Alpine have confirmed they will bring their first updates of the year to their car at Suzuka. The updates will mainly feature a new front wing as well as the first step of the much needed weight reduction of the car. Team principal Bruno Fabian said the changes were not considered to be major, but did stress that it is important to add the new elements as soon as possible so they're able to assess the potential and improve their understanding of their overall package. There will be other teams, I'm sure, who bring updates, but there is also a rumour that Red Bull could be set to introduce, as one outlet put it, a not minor update. And actually, it has been rumoured since testing that Japan was expected to be where we'd see the team bring a significant set of upgrades. However, as I sit here and record this on Wednesday afternoon, there has been no official word. So keep an eye out during the team's show and tell thing later this week. It could be interesting. Williams, by the way, have confirmed that Alex Albon's chassis has been repaired ahead of this weekend, and so they will run two cars in Japan. McLaren has confirmed another set of organisational changes since the last race in Australia. Changes the team says are aimed at further strengthening and evolving their technical model. David Sanchez, who only joined for Ferrari following a period of gardening leave a few months ago, has left the team saying that, quote, the role we envisioned and had agreed to was not aligned with the reality of the position I found. With Andrea Stella adding again, quote, Upon our joint reflection, it became apparent that the role, responsibilities and ambitions associated with David's position did not align with our original expectations when he agreed to join us in February 2023. As for the other changes, Rob Marshall will assume the role of chief designer. Neil Holdy will move to be technical director of engineering. Peter Pedromu will continue his role as technical director of aerodynamics. And there will be a streamlining of the concept and performance department to focus on performance will be led by the technical director of performance. Perhaps given that it's the concept and performance department, that's not a great surprise. A role Andrea Stella will assume until a permanent appointment is confirmed. The team also unveiled their driven by change delivery that will be used this weekend in Japan. The design is by Japanese artist Miltz, with the press release saying the design represents the speed of a Formula One car in the form of a dragon racing through the clouds. Sure. And Ayumu Awasa will make his F1 practice debut for RB this weekend as he hops into Daniel Ricciardo's car for FP1 on Friday to make it an all Japanese lineup for the team in that session. Iwasa, who is racing in Super Formula this year, did drive for Alpha Tarot last year's post-season Abu Dhabi test and said he is excited to get behind the wheel of an F1 car in his first official session in front of the fans at Suzuka. I've got to say, I'm really looking forward to seeing how he gets on in that car on Friday. Right then, time for some predictions. And as always, don't take these too seriously at all. They're just a little bit of fun. And if you do disagree, you can let me know yours in the comment section down below. And quite frankly, the less said about my last lot, the better. Wrong on everything apart from Verstappen's pole and Leclerc making the podium. So let's just move on very quickly. This week, well, perhaps unsurprisingly, I'm fully expecting Red Bull and Max Verstappen to bounce back following a difficult Sunday at Albert Park last time out. Suzuka is a track that should play to the strengths of the RB20 like many tracks do. It requires a good tyre management, handling balance and good straight line performance. So they are surely the favourites going into this one. Ferrari should be strong here too, as should McLaren. The track also playing to their strengths. In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the top three teams are the same as they were in Australia, just probably in a different order. I won't just go with Verstappen across the board though. I will mix things up a little bit and say that we'll see Charles Leclerc take pole position on Saturday, but it will be another one of those weekends where he's unable to convert that into victory with Verstappen taking P1 on Sunday. I think it is likely we'll be looking at a mix of Red Bull and Ferrari in the top three in some order. So I'll go with Leclerc P2 and Sainz P3, whilst also conceding it could just as easily be a Red Bull 1-2 with a Ferrari in third or even Carlos Sainz P2 with Leclerc in P3. I should say that doesn't mean I'm writing McLaren off. Not at all. They might get a top three spot. After all, they got both drivers up there last year. I just think if all four cars finish with no drama at all, Red Bull and Ferrari will have a bit too much for McLaren. They'll not be too far away though. Behind those three, I think Mercedes will end up in another battle with Aston Martin to be fourth best team on Sunday as Suzuka on paper and based on what we've seen at other tracks this year with high and medium speed corners will not be a particularly good track for the W15. So much so that I'm actually going to put Mercedes as fifth best finishing team come the end of the race with Fernando Alonso pipping both George Russell and Lewis Hamilton to a higher finish. It should be a fun fight there though. And finally for today, let's do some bold picks again. I'm going to say Yuki Tsunoda will get some points at his home Grand Prix, a top 10 finish obviously. Don't know why that needed clarifying. Anyway, ignoring all the other predictions I've made, I'll say that one driver from either Red Bull, Ferrari or McLaren fails to finish the race. And perhaps the boldest one of them all, maybe even the boldest prediction I've ever made, I'm going to say that Logan Sargent finally out-qualifies Alex Albon on Saturday. Although I'm not really sure I believe that's going to happen. You never know and all that though. That is it then for the Japanese Grand Prix preview, but don't forget to let me know your thoughts and your predictions ahead of the weekend in the comments section down below. 
Now, I will be back soon with some more content. And don't forget to join us live at 7 p.m. BST on Monday for the Japan debrief. And just to let you know on the subject of the debriefs, they will continue until the Monday after the race in Miami. And then I'll make a call on whether it's Monday debriefs or Sunday reactions for the rest of the year. Thank you, by the way, everybody, for your feedback on those streams. It really helps me make these decisions. In the meantime, though, if you did enjoy this one, then please do leave a like as it really does help the channel out and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos or streams. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.